Because we're a small school, but we do big science. Uh, I'm Van Romero. I'm the Vice President for Research at New Mexico Tech. Um, I was actually an undergraduate student here uh, in the 70s. Uh, left, went to uh, work uh, at various places around the country and decided to come back to New Mexico in 1995 mm -hmm. and have been here ever since. So why did you uh, decide to move back? So uh, after leaving New Mexico in the, in the late uh, 1970s, uh, my wife and I lived on the East Coast and in Texas and uh, after that experience, we realized that New Mexico would be a great place to raise our daughter, mm -hmm. and so we jumped at the chance to come back to New Mexico. Now, I've just been walking through the campus, and it's absolutely beautiful. When was the uh, campus founded? Uh, we've actually, this year is our 125-year anniversary, so uh, back in 1889, I think it was, that uh, the school was formed. Uh, originally was the School of Mines uh, in the territory of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And the campus is just loaded with beautiful, very mature trees. It's a, it is the most comfortable, quiet campus I've ever been on. Uh, it, it is uh, very much a, a small campus atmosphere. Uh, we only have 2,000 students. Uh, the nice thing about that is everyone knows everyone. Uh, we become friends with the students. Uh, we follow them throughout their career, and they come back quite often. And I was talking to some of the students that uh, chose this campus over East Coast opportunities that they were already accepted into. Um, why do you suppose they're doing that? Well, you know, here at New Mexico Tech, uh, we teach science, math, and engineering. We're, we're a STEM school, mm -hmm. um, and those are very good jobs right now. So students who come here have a great opportunity to get a good job, a good high-paying job. I think right now we're a second of West Coast or uh, Western universities in uh, student salaries after they graduate. Mm -hmm. So a great opportunity and it's a very good education. Uh, national ranking just came out where New Mexico Tech was ranked eighth in the nation for its engineering program. So a very good school but it's also very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, one of the best buys in the country. So it's cost, it's affordable, and it's a very good education. And I was I was uh, looking at some of the salaries that the students are able to get when they get out in the 70s and the 80s starting out, isn't it? That's, uh, it um, typical salaries are um, for undergraduate students uh, are in the sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 range. Mm -hmm. some, of the, some fields, the hot fields of petroleum engineering and chemical engineering and things like that could be as much as $100,000 a year for an, just an undergraduate degree. Now I find it fascinating that you have a very interesting mix here. You've got the hard mineral and the engineering and the geology, but you also have an extremely high-tech program in cybersecurity and everything, don't you? Cybersecurity is a very big uh, activity for us. Um, we've spun out a company uh, that's in Albuquerque, Canes. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our students are working for Canes, mm -hmm. uh, solving cybersecurity programs for the private industry as well as municipalities and, and state government. Uh, so it's been a very productive program, uh, and uh, unfortunately that business is just um, exploding, uh, going, uh, growing very rapidly. Right. And didn't they just get a new campus building? Um, Keynes has just got, uh, a, a purchased a building at uh, Mesa del Sol, right? So uh, right. Um, they need room to expand, and now they have it. Oh, very good. Yeah, and I saw the building. It's, uh, it's a beautiful building. Um, uh, and that was a technology spin-out, right? Correct. Uh, and right. are you contemplating other ones? Well, um, you know, uh, we like to say if we've seen one deal, you've seen one deal here at New Mexico Tech. Um, we, uh, a lot of technology is being developed. Mm -hmm. Some of that technology does turn into a lucrative activity for the university. For example, the nicotine patch. Uh, we held that patch. Uh, patches have since expired, but... The school made quite a bit of money off of that. Mm. Uh, so um, that's been uh, uh, very good intellectual property here. The cybersecurity, I think you'll see other things in uh, produced water. This is water that is produced from oil wells that's contaminated and how to clean it up. We have some intellectual property there. Mm -hmm. And whether we spin off a company or we sell the technology all depends on, on that particular deal. I've been following a little bit of the lab um, 
licensing, which has always been a little bit sticky because it, they never really transfer the license. My understanding is that they're going to go from uh, the uh, uh, corporate model to a university model. So do you anticipate in the future that there will be a closer relationship with labs and have some of the work they're doing trickle down into NMT? Well, of course, we've always had a close relationship with the national labs from, from the very beginning. Uh, when I was a student here, a number of the professors were ex-Manhattan um, project uh, personnel, so uh, a tight connection. Um, currently, um, we have a lot of our alumni that are employed at both Sandia and Los Alamos, uh, and we do a lot of work with them. Um, uh, so there's a good working relationship there. Intellectual property has been a little sticky uh, to pull out of the labs. Uh, it certainly is easier to do it through the university. Um, there is an organization called the New Mexico Consortium which is trying to bring the labs and the universities together to to build a hybrid type of activity. And I think something like the New Mexico Consortium is what's going to be needed to actually get that intellectual property out and get it so that it will uh, improve the economy. And you're kind of uh, halfway, well, a little bit closer to Albuquerque, but you're close to the, the new spaceport, too. Correct. Are you getting any... Uh, activity and helping with the spaceport? Yeah, spaceport certainly is, a, is of interest. Uh, uh, we have an um, um, aeronautical engineering program that we're doing in collaboration with New Mexico State. Uh, so our, and our mechanical engineering folks are doing a lot of work uh, uh, in spaceport type of activities. But the uh, real exciting thing is that uh, our Magdalena Ridge Observatory, we have uh, telescopes up on the Magdalena Ridge at 10,600 feet just behind the school here. And one of them is a fast tracking telescope, which has already tracked launches uh, out of White Sands Missile Range, and will be able to track launches from the spaceport. So when there's a, when people actually do end up flying into space, we'll be able to take a motion picture of their launch and also their reentry. Awesome! It's kind of like when you go on a roller coaster and they eat and, and they you take your, you take your picture as you come through, right? Yeah. <laughs> What fun! And you develop that technology for fast tracking telescopes here, or you? That the uh, we have uh, the largest telescope in the world that's devoted uh, specifically to what we call near Earth objects, uh, things in our solar system. Uh, its primary mission is to track asteroids. Uh, there's asteroids that pass between the Moon and the Earth just about every month. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them could be potentially hazardous, and so NASA wants to keep track of these potentially hazardous asteroids. But once you can do track those asteroids, now you can track uh, space vehicles, um, satellites, and other things that are in orbit around, around the Earth. So a lot of activity um, in this telescope. It's a large telescope, and it can move very quickly. The problem with tracking near-Earth objects is they have to move quickly. Right. Uh, so yeah, that technology is, has been developed here in New Mexico. Too. Wow. And that's another thing I had no idea that you were doing down here. So for the rest of the world, um, what would you tell them about New Mexico, Albuquerque, Cruces, and NMT? Um, specifically about NMT, and I think that does apply to other things in New Mexico, is we're a small school, but we do big science. Uh, the projects that we have here uh, rival the largest schools in the nation. Uh, we're on par with all the big name schools. Uh, the amount of, of research that goes on here is equal to uh, a, a university with 20,000 students. Uh, so we do big projects. Uh, our students get involved in those big projects and they get great, um, uh, they benefit from the experience of working on those projects. And I think that's, that's the case for New Mexico. New Mexico does big things, but it's a small state and it has the advantages of being a small state. People know each other. People um, are, are um, when you go to the grocery store, you might think it'll take you five minutes to run down to the store or not. Uh, that's not the case because you have to talk to everyone there because they're all your friends. So um, it's a, a, a great place to do business. Well, and, and people don't realize that really atomic energy came out of New Mexico. Computers, personal computers came out of New Mexico. Uh, what do you think the next big thing will be? Well, you know, um, there's a... Um, a recent, um, about a year old now, uh, Popular Science put out an article on the 10 most awe-inspiring projects in the world. And of those top 10, two of them are here in New Mexico, and actually two of them are here in Socorro. Uh, Earthscope, which is a large seismic mapping of the entire um, continental United States. It's the largest research project in earth science ever attempted by the National Science Foundation. 
that's being conducted here out of Socorro. And of course the VLA and radio astronomy and interferometry in general was also one of the top ten projects selected by Popular Science. So we're doing some really big things. You really are. That's great. Um, and uh, and living here in Socorro, uh, it's is relatively inexpensive compared to anything back east, isn't it? Oh, this is it. We you know when we moved from the from the east coast and came back to Socorro, it, it was uh, really great um, uh, to be able to. Um, to, to live in comfort, raise your children, uh, and, and have uh, uh, the resources to do the things that you want to do, um, it's really nice living in, 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 this, in this part of, of the country. And people don't realize, and I was talking to some of the people on campus, and they were keeping track of uh, a mama hawk that had five baby hawks <laughs> right in the back of your administrative right. building, yeah. right? We have quite a lot of, of wildlife. We have a, a a bunch of buzzards that live in this tree outside of my office. I always wonder if the buzzards are circling around, <laughs> waiting for you. <laughs> waiting for us. Uh, there's uh, uh, various birds in the trees. Uh, uh, there's the occasional rattlesnake that wanders onto campus every once in a while. Um, but um, just on the mountain, and in, in the, the, as you drive through Socorro, you'll see the mountain with the M on it. That's that's part of our campus. Um, there is a large herd of elk. Uh, some of the biggest elk I've ever seen are uh, right here in Socorro. Uh, so, um, lot, lots of stuff to do, especially if you like the outdoors. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, much uh, continued success to you and your students and the campus in general. Great. Appreciate it. Okay.